Corey Kispert's strength is simple, shooting. As mentioned, everybody knows him as a lights out shooter. He shot a combined 40% from beyond the arc in his college career, including 44% his senior season. He's the perfect guy to add to just about any NBA roster. He can do so much off the ball, similar to the likes of a Klay Thompson and a JJ Redick. This past season, going into the NCAA tournament undefeated, getting to the national championship game against the Baylor Bears, we saw Corey Kispert and the Gonzaga Bulldogs held at bay. This will do it. This will do it. Scott Drew's dream comes true. This led many scouts to believe Corey Kispert had a number of weaknesses. Some scouts said he had trouble creating his own shot. Others said he doesn't do much with the ball in his hands. After speaking with Corey Kispert today, Corey Kispert respectfully disagrees. Nice cut. Yeah. All right, this is FYL Sports Menace Lamont, and we are here, man. I know I've been telling you guys about this potential interview. We finally got him in here. Corey Kispert for the Gonzaga Bulldogs with one of his best friends, Chewy Zevenbergen. And uh, we got a lot of stuff we want to talk about with this guy potentially getting drafted in the first round of the NBA draft. What's next for him? I really want to talk about primarily and I want him to just jump right into this the struggles of last season I mean and I know that not there was a multitude of, of struggles that you guys potentially could have had I want you to just kind of Corey we'll start with you just just kind of dispel some of the myths because we saw you guys having an undefeated season and I felt like maybe if you guys would have lost the game early it would have took a little pressure off maybe just to kind of get that off your back as the ncaa tournament waned on with all of the issues with the pandemic and, and the, the seclusion having to stay secluded at that last game against baylor with all of that everything compacted undefeated season what was the pressure what eventually got to you and, and ultimately you guys kind of fell apart, I would say, especially in that second half of that game. What what happened to lead to lead to that particular situation with Baylor? What did they? I don't think they were the better team. I think you guys fell apart. Yeah, I mean, they were the better team that night. That's for they sure. were that night. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, that's really all that matters. It doesn't matter who's a better team. You know, leading up to that point, it's just whoever plays better. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pressure for sure. Um, you kind of are. Uh, isolated from it and kind of kept in a little bit of a bubble all year long just because there's no fans of the games. Media coverage is a little bit different than it usually is. Um, you know, a whole bunch of different things. But, you know, as we kind of move on game by game, it gets more and more. And, yeah, I mean, I mean, pressure or not, like, Baylor played a really, really, really good game. That's what it came down to. And it would have taken a huge effort from us to beat Baylor that night. So, you know, I want to discredit you know, anything they did either. I mean, they, they beat it out of us for sure. Now, yeah, Baylor played great. And then I want to, on the flip side of that, when we talk to Chewy here, D3 player, different experience, 
um, going, you know, understanding that summer what was happening going into the next semester. How did that? How did the Wentworth College? If hopefully I said the name of that college right. That's it. Now you're yeah. a D3 player yep. going into that season. Obviously, much different from D1. How? What? You know, what were the questions surrounding that particular season? And and, and then ultimately, when they canceled your guys' season, what what was next for you guys? Like, how did you guys handle deal with that? And with you, do you plan to come back and potentially play another year? Um, you just didn't know what to expect. The uncertainty definitely in the air at all times. Like we even know when the season was going to start, if we were guaranteed a schedule or not. So we had to schedule a bunch of games out of conference. Played like SPU and a bunch of other colleges that weren't usually in our conference. Uh, We just had to prepare the best. We started like conditioning and doing all that stuff two weeks prior to even um, earlier than what we usually would have started and uh, just had to prepare the best for us uh, honest and I, I, I don't plan on coming back for, like, for another year I, I enjoyed my experience um, definitely D3 is a different experience from D1 Corey could probably say that like takes a lot of time for sure, and you gotta admire that time that he puts into it. I definitely, on the other hand, it's more lenient. You put in what you want to get out of it, and I, I'm completely fine with what I've gone now of my experience. That's what's up, right? And I think you're 100% right about that, uh, with, especially with me kind of playing on, on some of those levels as well. I experienced that, you know, yeah, and my perspective is different as a walk on, obviously. On, on all on multiple levels but again you are 100 percent right on that i want to get to to aspirations after now college basketball is over um and, I, and i'm gonna backtrack a little bit with corey because before i get to the nba talk one thing that i noticed with you came in as a freshman even though you got hurt your freshman year six points a game the next year you got better eight points a game year after that got better 13 points a game year after that drastically get better 18 points a game Okay, so we see the progression. We see that we're dealing with a player who will get better. Yet, when I look at the NBA draft boards and when when they talk about Corey Kispert, they say he's the best shooter in this draft class by far. But there's not a lot of upside. And I said, how does that make sense? Because you're talking about a player who literally got better every single year in college. Not And, and, and getting better at a school where they're recruiting four and five star guard players every single year is hard to it's hard to do that. It's hard to, to, to keep that intestinal fortitude, to keep fighting for them starting position, fighting for minutes, all right, and staying locked in. Like going into the next level, what can you do to dispel that notion uh, that a lot of NBA boards have on you as far as you have little upside? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I've been doing it my whole life, so I don't plan on changing it anytime soon. Um, you know, I've been, I've been pigeonholed as, you know, just just a shooter, uh, you know, three point guy, stands and shoots, doesn't really go inside the three point. I mean, you know, I've, heard, I've heard it all. I've heard all the, you know, the knocks on my game and stuff. And I've, you know, I've worked hard every single year to kind of, you know, knock down pegs every single year and, and take care of those things. So uh, moving on to the next level won't be any won't be any different. I'm just gonna try my best and work my tail off to, you know, prove to the people that, you know, that have those voices um, and that can, you know, make those opinions that I'm much more than the kind of uh, player that they label me to be. Facts, and you gotta think, look at Devin Booker, they pegged him as a shooter. Boom. Look at them now. See, mm-hmm. so we see a lot of people. You pave your own way when you get there, Chewy. Now, again, coming from a different level of basketball, what are your aspirations now as a D three player? A lot of D three players that I know are looking maybe overseas, maybe giving up basketball. What are you? What are you looking to do? Um, because and again, you're a guy that stands out. It's not like you're just a guard like me or Corey. You stand out, six ten. Everybody who sees you is going to think you who play somewhere. What are your aspirations when, you know, when college is over? Um, honestly, I, I, I kind of look forward to the next chapter of life. I want to be mm-hmm. able to pursue a career in real estate, and I want to be able to have that type of aspiration. I want to also 
Corey's free guy at golf. Like I, I've definitely been <laughs> uh, growing a liking for that. And uh, yeah. yeah, I just, I'm kind of looking forward to a little break, but you never know. Maybe, maybe Euro Bowl. We'll see. I don't know exactly. Um, but I, I just plan to enjoy the next chapter of my life. Uh, I, 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 but you know, I hear a lot of people say that I, I, they always get that itch to at least go back and try. Um, I mean, there's definitely going to be opportunities for you. I know that much. It's, it's just about what you want to do. Um, now, again, in, in, with college with you, struggles of D3. Now, we just talked to Adonis Arms, um, who came on this show. He, he was a, a D2 player, went to D1, low-level low D1, had success. Now he's transferred to Texas Tech. Um, you are a D3 player. I want you to tell us about the struggles of of a D3 player with respect to expectations as far as, you know, I, I see a lot of D3 coaches who will promise players X, Y, and Z, but when that player gets there, sometimes if the coach doesn't like what he sees within the first six months, you can fall into that, the lad, you know, the, the you can fall into the bottom of the rotation and not see another minute. And that coach, yeah. you know, because D3 moves just like this, players coming in and out all the time, uh, detect on your decision to maybe steer away from basketball now, now that your career is over? Um, it's kind of, I don't know, D3, I definitely, from an understanding, you start to understand that it's more of a guards game for sure in that aspect. It's, but also I have enjoyed my experience. I, I've experienced some troubles, like I had back problems and just, mm. Uh, lower back, but then, uh, yeah, and also coaching changes and all. So there definitely is at times where you'll experience different different situations that you expect that you you can't plan all the time for the outcome that you want, but you just gotta play with the cards that you're given. And um, yeah, but I, I wouldn't change anything. I, I I try to have the mindset of just moving uh towards the future and not thriving on your past so can only learn from your past that's for sure hey well hey you know one thing you can always do is you can always come play with us in our pro-am league we could use a 610 center in our league elion unfortunately <laughs> didn't no nah, elion played great with us he was down there in our <laughs> league nah, uh, but no i gotta um, teach him some skills <laughs> no nah, he's good no so we're going we gonna to continue moving on because I want to get to the NBA and I want to ask Corey. We got some hot seat questions for Corey, man. So I'm going to have to put you on the big screen for some of these questions because these are some hot seat questions. that These are questions from subscribers. So I do apologize. Um, I see that your girlfriend also plays for Gonzaga. Jen Wer, basketball star. So, Jen, if you are watching this, um, we're going to be asking them some controversial questions. Hopefully he has the right answer. So, um, uh, yeah, it, it, I, like I said, I'm trying to separate myself from some of these questions, man, because there's some <laughs> spicy questions in here. Hold on, we're gonna put Corey on the big screen for this one right here. All right, Cor Corey Kispert, who was the first player to destroy you on the basketball court when you were Gonzaga Bulldog? A great question. Um, I think back to my freshman year, um, Jalen Hudson. He's a play, he played at uh, played at Florida. It was a senior when I was a I think it was a senior when I was a freshman. Um, I think he put up like forty something on us, Ooh. like a like a, uh, like a tournament at the beginning of the year, like a Thanksgiving tournament. Yeah, they they beat us uh, in overtime or double overtime, I think. And thanks to me, turn that game. Yeah, Jim. Wow. Okay. Second question. Celebrity crush. <laughs> Margot Robbie, man. Margot Robbie. Okay, Margot. Couldn't agree Robbie. more. I can't. I can't. I know. No, I. I can't knock that one. Oh, um, <laughs> favorite NBA player. This is a easy one, right? Clay Thompson. And it's like that. close. Yeah. Um, when he shoots the ball, obviously, is his best trait, but he can do so much more. And 
I think that's kind of the gold standard. That's the that's what I'm reaching for and shooting for to become an NBA or to, to become an NBA player like him. All right. First, the expensive purchase when you get your first NBA check. Probably going to be a car. Um, <laughs> you sure you seen my car? I drive a, oh, I drive a Ford, <laughs> Ford right now. That's that's all. Um, I'm from point A to point B and never breaks down, but it definitely. Uh, she's old faithful. Yeah, she's old faithful, but she definitely could use an upgrade. Okay. All right. This is a this is a this is a tough one. You could pass this one if you don't want it. Okay. <laughs> what NBA player do you know for certain you can cook right now if you step on the NBA court? Uh, uh, I would pick like a I don't know, like someone who doesn't, <laughs> doesn't get much burn anymore. Like kind of like an older guy who I could just like. Oh, so we'll go with Jared Dudley. Yeah, do like a little cardio, do a little cardio contest with Jared Dudley, and just run around the floor and see if he okay. can get a couple shots up. You can cook them though, right? Yeah, but I, I can hang a few on Jared for sure. Okay, Jared Dudley, you getting cooked? Yeah. Um, now this was an odd question. I, I mean, I kind of get it. It's funny to me. Can you avoid the IG models that say they give massages on Instagram if they hit you up in the DM? Well, thankfully, well, thankfully, no one's hit me up and asked me to give me a massage yet, so I don't have to deal with that quite yet. We'll see. Uh, I, think I'll have, I think I have the mental toughness to deal with that, no problem, but uh, no one's hit me up yet. All right, man. There we go right there, man. We had, we had those questions right there. I'm going to leave it at those questions right there. But, you know, we only reason I asked the IG models was funny, obviously, the situation with uh, Deshaun Watson and the situation with the – we, we talked about it on our channel. And I've talked about other athletes with that as well. And and I, every college athlete that I talk to, I'm going to ask Chewy his perspective on it. Corey, I want to ask you your perspective on it. I've already given my perspective to subscribers on it. Dealing with, and it's going to go to the next level with you, Corey. I'm sure you dealt with it to a certain degree at Gonzaga. Um, dealing with women. And, 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 and then have you seen that aspect of being a college athlete destroy players who had a lot of potential and how did you manage that while at Gonzaga? Yeah, I have for sure. And, and uh, no matter where you go, especially at the college level, there's going to be um, things are going to distract you from being you know, the best player that you want to be. And it's up to you to decide the importance of each like if you you know come to college and you decide basketball is not really your thing or you don't really you know love it as much as you thought you did that's totally fine um it just is weighing your priorities and making sure that um you know things are all straightened out in that regard uh, for me how i've kind of stuck with that you mentioned her earlier as my girlfriend and she played uh hoops at gonzaga too so mm -hmm. um not only is she the best one of the, or the best person i've ever met in my life she's also uh, a hooper too so she understands um the day in the day out the grind the, the time commitment that it takes um she'll rebound for me out of a hat whenever i need it um and you know she's my biggest fan and i'm hers so uh we support each other at games we want to see each other do well um so it made it really easy for me uh to have a girl in my corner to help me and encourage me uh that also knew the game you know knew the ins and outs and knew exactly what i was into as i you know progressed through the career Chewy, in, 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 on the D3 level, how did how did you manage that? Because like you said earlier, it, it's it's less restrictive, it's, it's, it's less asked of you. So actually you have more free time, right? And so it'd be much easier yep. to kind of drift, drift and kind of get into some of those off the court endeavors. How did you manage that, you know, in your time in, in D3 basketball? Um, definitely you gotta be able to make time outside of practice it's not just about grinding in practice make sure you're locked in but then outside of practice putting in the hours i had plenty of teammates that just were gym rats that just couldn't get enough of getting shots up and putting in the extra work um it's also about balancing your social life too at the same time have a equal balance of that um but definitely a uh, healthy mixture of both, I would have to say. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I 
and my from my experiences as well when i when i looked at that situation i i experienced a little bit of both immediately coming in i i, I immediately wanted to dive into those off the court things because i wasn't used in and then i got my mind right and got locked in focus later on so i so i kind of seen the both of that and i love asking a, a lot of athletes that question because i think that's a question that a lot of people don't even get asked you know and i think a lot of these young kids when we see all of these individual situations pop up on different campuses with players i think these student athletes need to know how to manage and deal with some of these things because some of these athletes don't see a lot of it in, in high school or college maybe they're sheltered and when they get to that scene it's everything's thrust upon you and you got access to all of this stuff just like that you know it's a different world so i mean i appreciate you guys being open and honest about that particular question um uh, where Corey, where where do you think and i know I, obviously i know the politically correct answer is going to be uh any team you want to go to any team you know i don't I, I i would feel the same way i wouldn't care but if you're thinking of your dream scenario your dream scenario where would you want to go dream scenario in the nba yeah, I mean, well, thankfully, you know, I kind of have a decent idea of where I'll be going yeah. to draft so I can, you know, mm -hmm. watch, watch these games that are happening now. And you can, you can eliminate some you can eliminate some teams that are going to have a better yeah. chance to get a really high pick, and you're going to eliminate some teams that have, you know, end of the first round pick, picks as well. Um, so I kind of have a little bit of a range. Uh, places uh, that come to mind, dream spots. Um, uh, Dallas would be really, really cool. San Antonio would be cool. Um, you know, playing a playing in Golden State um, would be really sweet. And, it, and the mm -hmm. common theme is you have like a, an established like superstar you know, on those teams, and I can provide you know floor spacing, I can provide grit, I can provide uh, defense and, and shot making as well to kind of um, supplement those superstars. So, in the trying to get in the paint and, and the help side, then I'll be the guy that can knock down that three ball. Um, you know, and make, make plays when needed. So I'm going to be a really good complimentary player in the NBA, at least my first couple of years. So, um, you know, being in systems like that uh, would be... I, the one thing that I thought about your game when I saw you play, one thing that I noticed was, I said there's a... Because a lot of people say the comparison to Joe Harris. And I said, I think the ceiling's slightly higher because I've seen the capability for this guy to be a non-pattern player going being able to go outside of the offense and get a bucket i've seen that i've seen glimpses of it even with all the star power around you being able to finish at the rim and if i'm being honest i would say you're a much better finisher at the rim than a guy like joe harris not just a shooter i think some of those things get overlooked and i think the biggest attribute that gets overlooked is the defense um and because you played on a team that was so good for so long I, and just because you know you guys were just naturally because everybody was great you guys were a naturally good defensive team. I think individually, I think your defense gets overlooked. Chewy, I want you to give me your thoughts. If you had to describe his game and his biggest weaknesses and strengths, how would you describe it? Well, the fact that I could cook him in a one on one, but <laughs> besides that, no, I'm just joking. Um, his biggest strengths, obviously, he has, he has a beautiful shot for sure. Um, defense, he's, he's tall, man. He's like, Six five, six like seven. that's uh, he, he, seven. Huh? Six, six seven, six seven, seven. Two twenty. That's solid. Nah, a little. No, I don't know. <laughs> pretty, pretty big size for how good of a shooter he is. So mm -hmm. definitely, that's a strong aspect. He's able to post up these smaller guards if he has a mismatch. So um, definitely, his his defense, his length. He has some lengths for sure, but. Um, those I, I think get underlooked. Need to get a little more credit for sure. It's a frame. Hey, yeah. and I tell and, and, and Chewy, he has a little brother, uh, Shiloh. I tell Shiloh all the time, you're gonna have to put the basketball down just a little bit because he's a gym rat right now. Absolutely. Put the basketball down. You're gonna have to get in that weight room because I can tell, and I think a lot of coaches can tell when players are in the weight room early. Corey's frame looks like. He's started in the weight room at a much earlier stage than most. I, I I didn't take it seriously in high school, and that ultimately hurt me in college. Corey, 
Chuck, when, how, when did you, when did you start in the weight room? Uh, I started taking it seriously. I mean, I was a football player my first two oh. years in high school, so that was kind of my introduction to it. Uh, learned how to like, lift properly and all the form and stuff. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, I was kind of lifting for mass, I guess, uh, in high school, and that's where I kind of got my frame. Um, and then now that I got to college, it's all about balance and mobility, um, flexibility, and all that stuff, too, is, is kind of been added to the picture. So while I was about the same size my freshman year in high school, like I'm a way better athlete all around uh, because I learned how to move move correctly and, and got you know, more flexible um, head to toe. That's facts right there. I mean, I saw all you high school players, and we got a lot of you guys who watch. Again, we you got to take that serious at early, especially if you're looking to get to the high level of D1 at the next level. If you can't yeah. just be a good high school player. You got to be serious. Yeah, that's what look at too is like every single like knee issue, like knee mm -hmm. tendonitis, hip problems, back problems that could all be solved in the weight room. So a lot of times, um, if you learn how to lift and lift well, like your injuries are going to take care of themselves um, just because of you know daily daily habits. Yeah, I had a lower lumbar injury college and i just went crazy doing pull-ups and back exercises strength exercises all those problems went away you know they i could have got injections i could have got surgery bypassed all that i just got in the weight room yep. and, and got my back stronger so he is 100 percent right on that well i'm not gonna keep you guys too much longer um before we get out of here i want both of you guys to at least tell everybody how they can follow you on social media whether it's twitter instagram because we want to follow you especially Corey. we want to follow you on that journey as you get through the NBA because we're going to be talking about you um you know and again whether it's we're having that discussion if he's a bust we go we can have that discussion if, if he's played above you know expectation I just want to have them conversations you know because you made it you got there um that's what we want to talk but let everybody know how they can follow you on social media yeah so for me Instagram is at kiss24 um and then Twitter is Corey underscore Kisper so Looking to kind of build the following and get things going on Instagram specifically, but I uh, love love the follow on Twitter too. Got you, Chewy. How can how can how can everybody follow you? Uh, you can hit me up at Chewy Zevenbergen on Instagram, and I'm not a big Twitter guy, but yeah, yeah. That's on my Instagram. Hey, right, well, hey, salute again, man. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to have been. We wish both of you guys success in all your endeavors. And especially, Corey, we're going to be watching. I hope to have you back on, man. If, if you are in some of those conversations for Rookie of the Year, I, I, again, out of all the rookies I've seen, I think it, you're probably close to the most NBA ready um, with some of the skill sets you're bringing in. And you're older. Hold on. How old are you coming into this draft? 22. 20, 23. So, again, you're older, a little bit more seasoned, uh, stronger. So, I think that can help, especially with the teams. I would love to see you um, maybe with – my favorite team, the Blazers. Man, uh, maybe you can fall there. I like that mix. Mm -hmm. um, I even like the Phoenix Suns, Boston Celtics. I know I'm sure those teams kind of fall into that mid first round range of what you're looking. Um, but you, I mean, with this draft, with some of the things that some of these teams need, you never know what can happen. So, I mean, I, I wish you the most success um, going into the next level of basketball and Chewy. Um, whatever you decide to do, I hope that you you know, I hope that you give overseas a try. I would love to see you, you know, follow those footsteps of your dad, man. Maybe give it a shot. Um, or at least you could come in and, and teach Elian some moves because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll see Corey having a little fun in the NBA, you know. <laughs> if I can do something with my basketball career. There you go. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, you guys stay right there for a second. But, hey, hey uh, I appreciate everybody for uh, all of the questions that you sent in for Corey. Um, and Chewy as well. Uh, we're going to be back. Uh, we're going to be back later with uh, more sports news. Uh, we got a few more interviews lined up this week uh, with some other uh, college athletes and also an NBA player. So make sure you guys stay tuned on FYF Sports, you know, for all the latest news in regards to college and NBA basketball. All right, but it's FYF Sports, man. It's been a great interview. Salute to Corey Kispert, Chewy Zevenberger, and we out. See you.